lot of fans, local media and national media talking about how, you know, Alabama losing Drew Sanders, Alabama losing Jingle Billingsley, crippling loss, painful loss. This is going to hurt Alabama. This is going to just really just, just crumble Alabama, really crippling loss, hurting both of those two, you know, losing both of those two individuals to the transfer portal and other programs. And uh, though I agree, both of those two elsewhere, it was a loss. It was a loss due to the experience they provide, the talent that they have, the big play ability that they present to the table. But when you use certain buzzwords like crippling, uh, huge, uh, big, uh, that is where I uh, respectfully disagree with that statement but you have so many people saying you know not having drew sanders big loss crippling oh it hurts not having those two you have so many folks going oh bama losing drew sanders five star bama losing Jamil billingsley four star that's a that's a massive 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 loss for alabama football and first and foremost i want to start with this I want to commend both of these two young men. I wish them the best where they are now. I wish them tremendous success where Drew Sanders with the Arkansas Razorbacks, Jimbo Billingsley with the Texas Longhorns. But I'm going to get into why this is not as much of a crippling loss as what people make it out to be. First and foremost here with one Drew Sanders. Drew Sanders is a good player. Drew Sanders is a very big-time talent. Sanders was a five-star in the 2020 class. He came in with Will Anderson. He came in with Chris Braswell. He came in with Quandarius Robinson. Drew Sanders is a big deal. Absolutely. Was a big-time outside linebacker in high school. Was a big-time tight end in high school out of Texas. I'm not taking anything away from Sanders. And when Chris Allen went down at the beginning part of the 2021 season against Miami, and we saw Drew step up, making big plays, pressuring the quarterback, getting that experience under his belt there. And he played good, and he played well, and he played solid. But Dallas Turner is just a completely different cat. And sometimes when you are a dog yourself, but you look over next to you and you see a dog that's got a more explosiveness, more burst, more get off, more edge, more big time plays in him. Sometimes it just is what it is. And for all the people talking about this, have you not noticed how uberly talented Alabama's outside linebacker room is right now? Do you not know how uberly stacked that room is? I mean, Sal Sanceri is putting this together more than T.I. was putting guns together. I mean, do you see how stacked that room is? Alabama brings back. Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, you still have Chris Braswell, you still have Quandarius Robinson, you still have uh, uh, you still have uh, uh, Keanu Coat, and then you bring in guys like Jeremiah Alexander, and then you bring in guys like um, Curtis Perry, and then you have a guy like a uh, you have a guy like a Kendrick Blackshire who could be an inside linebacker or an outside linebacker if the Crimson Child type chooses to cross train him like this is a stacked outside linebacker room right here just going back to dallas turner who had a phenomenal freshman year here for alabama I'm, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put this right here for you here's a stat alabama fans i want you guys to let this rest here on your cerebellum let this rotate on the brain stem let this marinate here in your minds Alabama has had quite the number of dynamic duo pass rushers in its history uh, of football here. But when you look at this here, so Eric Curry and John Copeland, the bookends from 1992. Curry and, Clo Curry and Copeland that season combined for 21 sacks. They each had 10 and a half. So 21 sacks there, Curry, Copeland in 92. Then you look at 2015, uh, the, the, the duo of Ryan Anderson and Tim Williams, 2015, uh, they had 16 and a half sacks. Ryan Anderson, Tim Williams, 16 and a half sacks in 2015. Then in 2016, uh, Ryan Anderson and, and Tim Williams combined for 18 sacks. So 18 sacks, 2016 for Anderson and Williams. 
Now you look at this past season. Will Anderson and Dallas Turner combined for 26 sacks. 26 sacks for these two. This is more than Anderson, than Ryan Anderson, Tim Williams in both years, 2015 and 16. This is more than the bookends, Curry and Copeland from that one year in 92. Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, 26 sacks. And remember, Turner started only three games. Started three. He played in all 15, but started three games. The last four games of the season, Auburn, Georgia, SEC title game, Cincinnati, and Georgia again for the national championship. Five and a half of Dallas Turner's eight and a half sacks came in those last four games. Dallas Turner had more sacks as a freshman than what Will Anderson had as a freshman. Think about that right there. So 26 sacks for these two combined, Anderson and Turner. We're looking at the new Ryan Anderson, Tim Williams. We're potentially looking at maybe even a better duo, maybe even a better duo than Curry and Copeland based off just the raw, based off just off the athleticism, off the production, and the, and the potential production for the future in terms of next season. So as good as Drew Sanders was, and he was good, he was good, to say crippling loss, hurting loss, bad loss, this is going to really affect Alabama. I respectfully disagree on that. Wish him the best at Arkansas because Arkansas and Sam Pittman, they got a good player. They got a really good player. Fantastic player. But to say this is a crippling loss, disagree with that one respectfully. Now we turn the page here to Jaleel Billingsley. Everybody saying this, crippling loss to for Alabama. And Jaleel kind of knew when he hit the transfer portal, I thought, keep your eyes on Texas because uh, Jeff Banks recruited him. And, uh, you know, with the success that he had with Steve Sarkeesian in 2020, as uh, when Sarkeesian was Alabama's offensive coordinator, I kind of thought if Billingsley was to go, keep your eyes on Texas. And as talented as Jillian was, as much potential as Billingsley had, sometimes uh, – Sometimes you're just not a fit, you know? Sometimes you're just not a fit. When you talk about playing at Alabama, you got to be able to fit at Alabama in terms of not only having the talent, but having the drive, having the work ethic, having the want to, having the heart. And sometimes when you watch Jillian out there in the field, you wonder, where's the work ethic? Where's the heart? Where's the energy? Where is the want to, to be on the field as an Alabama player. Maybe he finds that in Texas. Maybe so. Maybe he finds that in Texas. But for people saying, oh, this is just a crippling. Oh, this is a hurt. This is a bad loss for the Crimson Tide. Cameron Latou is back for Alabama. Cameron Latou uh, played better than Jaleel out there. Cameron Latou had eight touchdown receptions this season. I think he had all power five tight ends. And if he would have held on, to about three to four more balls, he probably would have had 12 to 13 touchdown catches and maybe would have been a first-round pick. But when you look at Cameron Latu, he gives you effort, he gives you energy, he gives you consistency, he gives you the want to being out there on the field. All he's got to do is tighten some things up. All he's got to do is fine-tune some areas. All he's got to do is clean some things up. And then you also look at, you have Robbie Oots back, who served in your fullback role prior to him getting hurt, but he's a tight end. So you got Robbie Utes back. Then Bama signed two freakish athletes at the position in this 2022 class. When you talk about Elijah Brown, of whom uh, our own Justin Smith, the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA, spoke on Brown has the body of NFL guys like your Travis Kelsey's, like, 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 your, um, you know, like your Travis Kelsey's, like your – like your Antonio Gates, if you will, like your Jimmy Grahams. In terms of former Alabama tight ends, he has the body of your O.J. Howard. So, and then you bring in Amari in the black, who is built similarly to Jaleel Billingsley, probably a bit thicker than Jaleel. So you've got Elijah Brown and you've got Amari in the black there joining Cameron Latu and Robbie Oots at tight end. As much as, yes, it's a loss, it, it hurts a little bit not having Jingle Billingsley, but people go crippling loss, huge loss, 
bad loss. This is going to really hurt Alabama. I respectfully disagree there with those statements.